Manam is having a forehead. Raise your hand if you wish you knew how to paint detailed, intricate backgrounds digitally. Today we're going to take a look at the iconic watercolor style, super detailed backgrounds of an artist that I've been obsessed with lately, Jamila Kanov. We're going to walk through some of her speed paints and maybe take a look at those beautiful, almost Studio Ghibli style environments. And hopefully by the end of this, we can all come out as better rounded illustrators instead of people who just paint characters on a flat background with maybe a round gradient. I see you, I know you cheat, I do it too, it's okay. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, then please let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button down below. If there are any other iconic art techniques you'd like to see in this series in the future, leave those in a comment below and I'll add them to my list. Alrighty, let's take a look at painting some iconic backgrounds in the style of Jamila Kanal. Jamila Knopf is an illustrator and instructor based in Leipzig, Germany. She has been drawing her whole life and by her own admission, though she was really good, she was constantly told that art is not a practical career choice. And so she went to uni for teaching while also honing her art skills on the side. However, as I'm sure most artists can confirm, once a creative life path latches onto your brain, it just never lets go. So eventually Eventually, she hopped on social media sharing her illustrations on there and to the surprise of absolutely no one, her art kind of blew up and now she has over half a million followers on Instagram alone. In her own words, Jamila's paintings evoke a sense of wonder and nostalgia and her favourite theme includes places of quiet contemplation where nature prevails over concrete. This is funny because before I even read this bit on her website, I actually I actually wrote down in my notes that her art is like an interface between nature and architecture. But my favourite part of her art is that it has this children's illustration feel to it, while still looking like very sophisticated illustrations and that is a specific effect I want to touch on today. Now obviously we can't condense decades of painting experience into a little video, but my goal today is to build patience, cause guess what, she paints every little detail by hand. Yep, those leaves are all hand painted as is every little brick and rock. My Aries is so close to quitting but we're in too deep so we're gonna see this through. We're here to face our challenges not run from them. So without much further ado let's dive right in. The very first thing I noticed across the majority of Jamila's work is the beauty in its simplicity. Because when it comes to perspective, the most dominant setup is a single point perspective. Now, obviously, when you're painting a realistic scene, you're gonna have three points of perspective to create that 3D space. But if you look for the most dominant dramatic angles in her art, you'll notice that they originate from a single point. And the other two points of perspective are so far away that the other two dimensions are basically sets of parallel lines. So today we're going to set up a pretty simple single point perspective and use that to influence some dramatic lines and shapes both in the sky and on the ground. With that in place, I think the key to having an intricate background starts with a super detailed sketch. If you've watched Jamila paint, you know she always puts down as much detail in her sketch layer as she possibly can before even selecting her colors. So it's not just a silhouette of a bush or a tree, it is the individual leaves. It's not just an indication of a sky, it's every line of the cloud that you can see. However, we also want to keep in mind that theme of nostalgia and nature taking over a concrete jungle. So today I'm actually going to paint a scene from my own childhood from a very eventful summer down south. I'll tell you all about it later in the video. We're going to have a house by a forest and two little girls, maybe some baby goats and some feisty chicken. I'm bearing in mind that we need to have compositional balance though because it can be so easy to throw in so many details that the scene feels super crowded. 
So whenever you paint a background or paint anything really, make sure you leave areas of flat space, almost like some breathing room in the midst of all that detail. This is super important because later in the painting, I realized that I hadn't left nearly enough breathing space, so keep that in mind. So with the sketch in place, here's what we have after step one. When it comes to picking colors for the painting, what I noticed was that Jamila's initial color palette is very much like the colors you'd use for children's illustrations. What that means is everything is colored in its true color scheme. So the sky is blue, the leaves are green, a gray hoodie is gray, and an orange cat is orange. Everything is colored in as if the only light source is a diffused white light that reflects the true colors of each object in the scene. So we're gonna start by picking mid-tone colors that fit each object's true color. I'm gonna do a bunch of greens and yellows for the trees, white for the walls, gray for the concrete and rocks, brown mud, and so on. And I actually want to paint a pinky orangey sky today, so we're gonna do that. Notice how I'm not painting everything to have a very strong tinge of orange or pink quite yet. We'll come to that later. For now, I just start with flat base tones that you would see in daylight. I'm still going to keep the sketch layer on top of all of this and we're actually going to preserve the sketch for the most part. Let's go ahead and add some dimensions. Now this is probably the longest part of the process because we're going to render pretty much every single thing by hand. So every leaf, every rock, every little detail, it is all painted in manually, no vector or stamp brushes. In fact, the two most common brushes I noticed Jamila using are a watercolor brush and a sketch pen type brush. Thankfully, Krita has variations of these two styles of brush, so I didn't have to actually struggle and find a good analog, but if you use Photoshop, you can definitely get her brushes on Gumroad. The way Jamila renders dimensions is not by using blending, but rather by using contrast in a few different ways. The first is to differentiate between objects. You'll find that the contrast is super strong between two different materials, but relatively weaker within each material. So a tree will have a very different value than the sky, but within the tree itself, the leaves have very similar values to each other. She also uses contrast to create atmospheric perspective. If you've never heard the term atmospheric perspective, it's basically the phenomenon where objects that are far away from you appear lighter and more hazy, while objects that are closer to you appear darker. This is because there is a lot of air between you and the distant object, and air diffracts a lot of light within itself, creating like a blanket of haze in between. In Jamila's work, you'll notice that the distant objects have super low contrast, as in the values of the highlights and shadows aren't very different, whereas objects in the foreground have super high contrast. And finally, and this one was a much more subtle way, Jamila uses contrast to sharpen or blur certain objects. Because when you look at her final background, you'll see that pretty much everything is painted to have very flat areas of color, and there are very few, if any, areas of rounded, soft, airbrushy blending. But even so, the grass and the clouds appear soft and lush, while the buildings or windows appear hard. This is because all the softer stuff is painted to have a much lower contrast between the highlights and shadows, whereas the sharper plane shifts are painted to have a stronger contrast between the highlights and shadows. But it is all still hard edges and flat areas of color. It is the contrast between the adjacent values that creates the illusion of blending and softness rather than very much actual blending. Jamila does use this principle to also simulate blurring where she drops the contrast down so much that the highlights and shadows are only a couple of values apart. But another way to really blur things out while keeping hard edges is to merge shades. So with distant trees or plants for instance, you'll see a lot of the leaves kind of merge into large irregular shapes instead of standing out as individual leaves. And that creates a low detail effect that our brain automatically assumes is due to blurring. Okay, 
I know that was a lot of information to take in, but the point I'm trying to make is that Shamila doesn't really use textured brushes or an airbrush to create soft and hard edges. She uses flat, hard-edged brushes for every material, but differentiates between them using contrast. And like I said, this was definitely the longest part of the process and took more patience than I generally have. But here's what we have after step two. Remember how I said although Jamila's art looks like children's illustrations, there is a sense of sophistication to it? Well, that's because after putting down the majority of the rendering, Jamila then sets about colour grading the entire scene. This step is more or less intuitive because now that we've painted all the individual elements with values, we're going to work on tying them together using colour. And to be honest with you, this was my personal favourite part of this process. Sure, we have our levels, hue, sat, and colour balance adjustment, but one thing I noticed she does a lot of is using subtle gradient maps. And remember how I said I wanted a pink orangey sky but wasn't going to paint everything pink quite yet? Well, now is the time. I'm going to start adding some gradient maps where you have lots of pinks and oranges and yellows, both in the highlights and in the shadows. I feel like really tinting the shadows to be nice and warm creates that super hazy, super nostalgic effect, and it's definitely something I've noticed a lot in her art too. And I'm going to play around with the blending mode, see which ones work. One huge tip here is that you want to take this in small iterations. What that means is instead of trying to have the perfect colour grade in one fell swoop, try multiple super subtle gradient map layers. Not only is this a lot more forgiving, you'll also have much more depth and variation in the colour palette, which ultimately makes your painting look a lot more sophisticated and nuanced. Essentially, we painted the texture and environment in step 2, but step 3 is where we add mood and atmosphere. You guys already know I love adding floating specks of light and just little particles it creates the illusion of a gentle breeze and adds tons and tons of movement to a still painting so that's what I'm throwing in here and finally we're gonna go through the line art decide which lines we're gonna keep which ones are just too noisy there isn't really a formula to this and for the most part we've integrated the lines into the painting but it can help to go through and add more definition to the midground and foreground areas maybe even get rid of some of the lines in the far background so this scene that I'm painting has a cute little backstory. Growing up, my little cousin and I were basically joined at the hip, and pretty much every other summer, we would travel down south to spend a few weeks with our grandma and just get away from the city. Well, this one summer, our grandma put up a little swing in the front porch for us both to play on. It was a finicky little thing and the ropes were short, so we basically had to jump quite high up even to just get on the thing. We were maybe five and eight at the time, Anyway, we were out playing and my little cousin fell off the swing and scraped her elbows and knees on the concrete underneath. And of course, she cried and my mum came out running. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If she cried, I cried and vice versa. We were always like that. So here we were, both sobbing away. <laughs> and then my mum yelled at me because I should have taken better care of her because she was so little and I was the older one. And that really made me cry. But my cousin was a little fighter. She marched right up to my mum and told her off for yelling at me. It was the funniest thing and to this day my mum brings it up how that was the longest lecture she's ever had. But <laughs> yeah, I thought you guys might enjoy a bit of wholesomeness in the story behind this painting. I love how it turned out and I feel like it captured the entire scene so perfectly. So here is the finished painting for this week, idyllic. See, I told you we were going to face our challenges today, didn't I? This was definitely a nice change of pace and I absolutely forgot how therapeutic it can be to just sit down and paint some environments, no crazy drama, no otherworldly lighting or anything like that. Just you and the environment and the repetitive motion. 
If you've enjoyed this video and learned something today, then please do let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button for even more cool, fun art videos. Do you have any cute, wholesome memories from childhood? Please feel free to leave them in a comment below because I love reading you guys' stories and I'm sure everyone in the comment section would love to read them too. Remember, if you want to grab even more chatty, real-time, paint-along style videos, you can come check out my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the video description. And if you just want to hang out with me and some really cool people and share your art and receive critique on the daily then please come check out my discord server i will also leave a link to that in the description below and with all of that said thank you so so much for hanging out with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more videos up here and i'll see you guys on the next one bye